Hi everybody, how's it going? Welcome back to another Astro Exploring video. My name is Nick and today we are talking about Telescope Live. Now I just want to say right off the bat that Telescope Live have not paid me to make this video. What they did do however when they found out that I wanted to do a review of their platform is give me a one month free trial of their gold package and 50 credits for free so that I could get used to the interface and download some data and have a play around with it etc in order for me to be able to give the best possible review to make this video. Telescope Live is a subscription based platform giving astrophotographers and scientists an opportunity to control or use data from remote telescopes in Chile, Spain and Australia ranging from small wide field refractors up to one meter wide reflectors. Obtaining data from Telescope Live is split into two categories. There are one-click observations and advanced requests. One-click observations are data sets that are obtained every day from the telescopes, covering a huge amount of deep sky objects in the northern and southern hemispheres. Currently, there are over 120,000 images available in one-click observations. All of the one-click observations are pre-calibrated with darks, flats, bias before you download them, and there is a post-processed JPEG available to compare your result to the result from Telescope Live. One-click observations can be downloaded as either one night's worth of imaging which would generally be about one hour's worth of data or you can download observations as a bundle which are images that are collected on the same target over multiple nights using the same telescope and bundled together in one observation package. Advanced requests give the ability to control every aspect of your observation. The cost of these sessions depends on the telescope you use and is charged by the hour. You can control everything from the object to the filters, basically every aspect of a night of deep sky astrophotography as you would in your backyard, but with potentially about £250,000 worth of observatory equipment, which I think is pretty amazing. Subscriptions to Telescope Live come in three forms. There's bronze, silver and gold. The bronze package is only £4 per month, and that gets you five credits each month to grab one-click observations. It will give you two upvotes to vote for future one-click observations. And you'll also get access to the standard video tutorials to help you with things like uh, stacking and post-processing and things like that. And we'll look at just how much data you can actually get for each credit that you spend on Telescope Live in just a minute. Silver package is £19 per month. That gets you 20 credits each month to grab one-click observations. You get five upvotes for future one-clicks each month. You get access to observation bundles, which are essentially collections of one-click observations. It's the equivalent of imaging the same target over multiple nights with your own gear in your backyard to gain extra data. You gain access to their premium video tutorials and you can also take control of the telescopes through advanced requests which is something that you don't get in the bronze package. Gold plan is £50 a month and that gets you 50 credits each month. You get 15 upvotes each month for future one-click observations. You also get a 20% discount on all advanced requests. And probably best of all in this package, you actually get assigned a personal tutor who can help out with all aspects of astrophotography. And here are some example images that I have processed using Telescope Live. This image is the California Nebula in the show palette, and this is just one hour's worth of data, 20 minutes with each filter, which just goes to show that having a quarter of a million pounds worth of kit in the middle of the desert with lots of clear skies don't need a lot of data to be able to pull out an incredible amount of detail in a deep sky object. The next image that I did was the Lagoon and Triffid Nebulae in the show palette. This is two hours worth of data with 40 minutes on each filter. And this is a target that I wanted to image from my own back garden for quite a while, but it's just too low on the horizon for me to be able to image in my location. This is an image of the North America and Pelican Nebulae. The reason I grabbed this one is the North American Nebula is one of my favorite deep sky objects during the summer months. And I wanted to see what it looked like in the show palette with just one hour's worth of data. So this is again, 20 minutes with each filter. And 
To be able to learn how to process the show palette, I actually used one of Telescope Live's tutorials, which um, gave me a great overview of how to use the selective color tool in Photoshop to be able to actually get the color balance correct. The next image is the Pleiades, and I grabbed this one because it was in LRGB, and I've never processed an image in LRGB before, so I thought that would be interesting to process. So this is one hour, 20 minutes worth of data. Again, 20 minutes with each filter. Images that I've downloaded but I'm yet to process are actually an observation bundle of the Andromeda Galaxy, the Heart Nebula, Spaghetti Nebula, and Dumbbell Nebula. And you can see that I've still got 37.3 credits left. So I've spent a little under 13 credits in total and I've come up with four great images so far and I've downloaded another four data sets. So you can see that the credits do go quite a long way. Some of the data sets that I downloaded were only 0.4 credits. So even on the bronze package with five credits a month, 0.4 credits means that you can still download quite a reasonable amount of data. And when the data has just been grabbed, you actually get 30% off for the first 24 hours. So you can see that there are data sets here that are 0.4, 0.5 credits. And this one here, 0.1 credits. I mean, it's incredible. The amount that you could download just for five credits a month alone, I think is well worth the money. So now that we know what Telescope Live is, let's talk about what Telescope Live isn't. It is not designed to replace amateur astrophotographers like you and me from buying our own gear, getting set up in our own garden or dark sky site and taking our own images, getting our own data, processing our own images and the real satisfaction that comes from doing this hobby. It's actually the opposite. It's there to complement amateur astrophotographers like you and me and I'll get onto that a little bit more in a minute. It is also not a service by which you can suddenly start processing your own data, making prints and selling them for a profit or posting those images that you've processed to social media without crediting Telescope Live seeing as Telescope Live Observatories collected that data for you to process. They own that data. So we've learned about what Telescope Live is and isn't, and I've also shared with you some of the images that I've processed along the way in using this platform. I'm now gonna to talk to you a little bit about my thoughts on Telescope Live as a whole. Am I sitting here telling everybody to suddenly ditch all of their astrophotography gear, sign up for Telescope Live, and never go out in the back garden with the telescope ever again? No, I'm absolutely not saying that. What I am saying, however, is that I think Telescope Live is a service whereby, if like me in the UK, you're 99% under constant cloud cover, then I think Telescope Live is just a great way to keep interested in astrophotography. Just playing around with the data is something that I enjoy, and even if I haven't captured that data myself, it still keeps me interested in the hobby. You've also got the opportunity to process data from deep sky objects located in a hemisphere that you aren't. So for me, getting the opportunity to process data from southern hemisphere targets that I see on the likes of Twitter and Instagram, etc., is something that I've really enjoyed. And I also don't have a mono camera at the moment. I'm using a one-shot color camera and also a DSLR with that as well. And so getting the opportunity to use mono data, whether that be in the show palette or LRGB filters, then that's presented a new challenge and a new opportunity for me to learn different ways of processing data. And I've actually really enjoyed the challenge that that has brought and I hope to carry on with more show and LRGB data processing in the future. As for whether or not it feels like cheating, I think if you're going to download a load of data, process it, post it as your own, then yes, that absolutely is cheating. But I think if you're using the service for what it's intended, then it doesn't feel like cheating to me at all. I mean, quite frankly, the opportunity to control a remote observatory in, in the middle of nowhere in the Southern Hemisphere in Chile that's worth a quarter of a million pounds, all while sitting at my laptop at home here in the UK, I think is pretty amazing. And so it doesn't feel like cheating to me. Is it gonna stop me from going outside into my back garden with my own telescope? No, absolutely not. I'm still really keen to do that at any given opportunity. But this, I think, just complements that so well. 
Now, if you like what you heard in this video, then do consider giving the video a thumbs up to let me know that you enjoyed it. But also, if you're interested in signing up for Telescope Live, you can get a one-week free trial of the silver or gold packages, and Telescope Live have very kindly given me a code, Astro Exploring, which I will leave a link to in the description down below to give you 50% off either the silver or gold packages for your first 12 months. So if you want to go and check that out, like I said, I will leave that link in the description down below because that is an absolute bargain. And once you've signed up to Telescope Live and you're scratching your head looking at how to process all of that data and want to learn more from some of my videos on this channel using Adobe Photoshop, then make sure you go ahead and click into this video right here where you can learn all about Photoshop processing for deep sky astrophotography. And I'll see you in the next one.